This presentation will cover pasture, rangeland, forage, rainfall index insurance. Pasture, rangeland, forage, rainfall index insurance is insurance for precipitation that focuses on, on a specific area or grid that impacts forage production from pasture, rangeland, or hay ground. The rainfall index uses National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Climate Prediction Center daily precipitation to determine long-term averages and also determine when a deficit should result in an indemnity being paid. Rainfall index insurance insures against a decline in precipitation below an index value based on historic precipitation for the grid. Payments are based on the percentage that precipitation deviates below the long-term average. Average is assumed to be 100%. Historical data from 1948 to the present is used to determine long-term averages and also to determine when an indemnity due to a deficit between what currently occurred in this year and the long-term average should result in a payment being made to the person who took out the insurance. Pasture range and forage insurance runs from January 1st to December 31st. Precipitation is insured by grid, not by individual farm, and I think this is important to understand. Uh, your farm or the land that you're insuring is identified by the grid that that land is located in. And just as we know from personal experience that you might get an inch of rain on your farm and two miles down the road they might get two. Over the long term, your average precipitation between the two farms probably evens out to be pretty close. But this insurance is for a grid, it's not for individual farm. Grids are 0.25 degrees in latitude by 0.25 degrees in longitude, or approximately 12 by 12 miles in size. Precipitation data for the grid is collected daily from four weather stations closest to the center of the grid, and from that data, the average precipitation for the grid is interpolated. I think it's also very helpful for us to look at an example, so I pulled one here up on the screen. If you go to the website at the top of your screen there, uh, this is from the RMA USDA website, uh, you can see this tool and how we would use the tool. For purposes of this presentation, I chose to use the location west of North Platte, Nebraska, and you can see the grid that I identified, the ground that I'm going to insure in is in grid ID 25317. You can use this tool for your to find location for your farm or ranch or the ground that you want to insure in this insurance based on putting in a town or a section, a township range location. Uh, all those can help you find the grid that the, your ground is located in. When we think about using pasture rangeland forage insurance, we have some decisions to make with the insurance. First is what is the intended use for the acres that we're going to insure? This insurance is for perennial forage production, either for new grazing or through haying. It's not for annual forage production. There is another tool available for precipitation insurance for annual forage production, and that insurance is available uh, through, again, a different policy. You also need to pick the coverage level. What percent of precipitation do you want to insure for? The next one you have to look at is productivity factor. Uh, how do you think your ground compares to the county average in terms of productivity and the value of forage from that ground? Insurable interest, you have to own the acres or you can only insure those acres which you have ownership of. And so if you're in a partnership, uh, maybe you own 50% and someone else owns 50%, you can only insure for the 50% that you own. You also can insure acres that you cash lease that you have control over. Uh, you have to verify the acres that you're going to insure. And then also you need to select the two month intervals for precipitation that you want to buy insurance coverage for. Thinking about the level of coverage that you select, there's five different options. You can select for 70 or 75% in coverage, 80 or 85%, as well as 90% coverage of precipitation. Let's say, for example, that I chose to pick 70% coverage, which would ensure 70% of the long-term average precipitation for the two-month interval I select. Let's say I select for April, May, and the long-term average precipitation for that two-month interval for the grid where my land is located is 7 inches. What I've insured for, then, is 4.9 inches of precipitation for the grid. 
If precipitation falls below that 4.9 inches, then the difference between the 4.9 inches I've insured for and what I actually received would be what I would get paid for an indemnity on. One thing that's good to know about this insurance is that it's significantly subsidized. At the 70 and 75% insurance coverage level for precipitation, it's subsidized 59%. At the 80 and 85 percent level, it's subsidized 55 percent, and at the 90 percent coverage level, it's subsidized 51 percent. Productivity factors. You can adjust the productivity factor for the insurance ranging from 60 to 150 percent based on what you think your forage value is in comparison to the county base value. Uh, these can be changed in 1 percent incremental changes. Increasing or decreasing the productivity factor impacts the cost of the insurance premium, but also potentially will increase the indemnity that you receive as well. And we'll look at this example a little more in a moment. Insurable interest and insured acres, we've already briefly touched on this, but again, you can only insure for those acres that you have ownership of or are controlling through leasing, and you need to, need to verify those acres when you purchase the insurance. One thing I do want to point out is just because you own the acres doesn't mean you think you need to insure them. And so I can conceive of situations where you might choose to insure your hay ground but not your pasture or rangeland, or vice versa. And so looking at the insurance and thinking the fact, the fact of how you might use it is important as well. There are 11 two-month intervals that you can select the insurance for in terms of precipitation coverage. You must select two intervals per year and you can select as many as six. However, these intervals cannot overlap. So let's say that I think May is a critical month for me in terms of precipitation for forage production. I can't select both April, May and May, June. I could select either March, April or uh, May, June, but I can't have those intervals overlap. Also, you can't put um, less than 10% coverage in any two month interval or more than 60% in any one two month interval. County base values. County base values are based on the location of the grid in relation to the county where it's located in. And based on that, a value is assigned for grazing and forage production on a per acre basis. The county base values are assigned and differentiated for dry land or irrigated perennial forage production, as well as rangeland or pasture. Again, back to our example. For this particular example, I chose grazing. I chose 90% coverage level, a productivity factor of 100%. I own all 1,000 acres, and so I have 100% of insurable interest. And I picked the sample year of 2012. Uh, let's blow up this page a little bit more so we can see a little more on the county base value information. Uh, looking at that blue arrow, that policy information in the lower left-hand part of your screen, I want to blow that up and look at that in a little more detail. County base value. For Lincoln County for rangeland, the insurance policy says a county base value is $23.60, which means they think the forage production potential from that acre of rangeland is worth $23.60. In my example, I insured for 90%, which gives me $21.24 per acre of protection. I insured 1,000 acres. My total policy protection is $21,240. The cost of the insurance is subsidized 51%. And uh, what this is saying is then for my total policy protection of $21,240, if I selected three two-month intervals, in this example I selected March, April, May, June, and July, August, if it did not rain at all, in those three two-month intervals, not a one drop of rain fell in that time period, then I would collect $21,240. Obviously, that's an extreme example. Probably never are we going to have a situation where we have, would have those three two-month intervals and not get any precipitation at all in the grid. But that just gives you an idea of what the policy protection is for. Now let's say I look at this county base value and I say, I don't think that's enough. That $23.60 is not enough, and so I increase the productivity factor up to 150%. I'm saying the value of the forge from this is much greater than the county base value. And so my dollar amount of protection, which is in the right-hand side, goes up to $31.86. I 
Again, I totally insured 1,000 acres, so total policy protection of 31,860. Some things I think are important to evaluate as you think about this insurance tool is when does precipitation for your location really impact forage production? How would choosing intervals throughout the year performed historically? What have been in the return to premium invested? And then how frequently would indemnities have covered the cost of a premium? And how often would this have occurred? Meaning how many years, if you spent the money on the premium, would you have collected an indemnity that covered the cost of the premium? And how frequently would that have occurred? In Nebraska, April and May precipitation is critical for cool season grass species, as well as May, June precipitation is critical for warm season grass species. You have to think about your own resource and when precipitation is critical for you. Pulling up the, again this Lincoln County example, you can see that I chose to insure for the 2012 year, March, April at 30%, May, June at 50%, and July, August at 20. In 2012, actually in the months of March, April, there was above average precipitation and so no indemnity was due. However, from May, June and July, August, it was very dry and so an indemnity was due to me. If you look down below, you can see that the cost of the premium was $3.10 per acre. It subsidized 51%, so I had to come up with the other 49%, which was $1.52 per acre. In 2012, I would have spent uh, $1,520 on the cost of the premium for this insurance. However, because of the drought and because of the months I selected, the indemnity I would have received for this 1,000 acres would have been $10,396. If you select the cost of the premium from the indemnity, I would have netted $8,876 on this 1,000 acres of rangeland, which I could have used to buy feed or do something else with to replace the forage that I lost. One nice thing about this tool is you also can see how your selections would have performed historically. And I really think this is an important tool to go look at and evaluate and see if I was to buy this insurance year in, year out for the two month intervals I've selected at the coverage levels I've selected, how would it have paid? What would have been the premium expense? What would have been the indemnity? How often would an indemnity covered premium? And how frequently would that have occurred? Some important dates to remember. The sales closing date is November 15th. So if you want to buy this insurance for 2018, you have to have your insurance policy in place by November 15th. The acreage report is also due at that time. Premiums for the insurance actually don't occur until September 1st for the year that you have coverage in. Indemnities are due and are credited against premiums if they occur prior to the billing cycle. Here's some thoughts on application and use. First, you need to know your resource and how precipitation impacts forage growth. Second, you need to understand how the insurance would have worked historically and how often it would have paid you. What is the return per dollar invested? And finally, as I've worked with producers, I find that those who are consistent in their participation are those that tend to be the most happy with it. It's really not prudent to try to outguess what might happen with uh, precipitation and try to jump in and out. You need to look historically at what's occurred Pick a level of coverage, uh, pick those months that you think are going to be the best value for you, participate in the insurance, and then stick with it year in, year out. Finally, if you have questions about utilizing pasture rangeland and forage insurance, please feel free to contact me either by email or by phone. Also, I've written a NEB guide with Monty Vandeveer uh, that's listed there on your screen. This is available at the beef.unl.edu website and walks through uh, more in-depth examples of how to utilize pasture, rangeland, and forage insurance as a risk management tool, the precipitation index, and how you might utilize it on your operation.